Today we're going to see how to solve for the number of water molecules trapped in your copper sulfate uh, that you saw in lab a couple of days ago. So we're going to do that by solving for another example of something called magnesium sulfate. Uh, your, these numbers are going to be different than what yours in lab will be, uh, but if we follow the example here and just replace the numbers that I give you for magnesium sulfate with your numbers from copper sulfate, you should work out with a nice whole number of water molecules just like this magnesium sulfate will. So to begin with, you needed your mass of the evaporating dish. Yours is probably somewhere in the ballpark of 47.50 grams, somewhere around there. I'm just making this data up. Uh, the mass of the evaporating dish and hydrated crystal, that was after you put your blue crystal in the evaporating dish. Uh, it should have been about 5 grams more than that, so this is going to be 52.50 grams. Okay, so again, I'm just making this data up. Uh, and then the mass of the evaporating dish and anhydrous crystal, that is after you have heated it and reheated it and gotten a final mass. So it should be somewhere greater than the mass of your evaporating dish, but less than that of your hydrated crystal. And for magnesium sulfate, if we do this, the number would work out at 49.94 grams. Okay, so that's the data I'm making up for magnesium sulfate. We're going to go ahead and label these 1, 2, and 3, so down below we can see exactly how to find the values that you need to put on your data sheet. So the mass of hydrated crystals, uh, to find that number, it's going to be the number 2 data point, subtracting the first data point. So for us that is 52.50 grams minus 47.50 grams, and that comes out at a nice 5 grams here. Yours is probably not going to be that precise, but if it's close to 5, that's what we're looking for. The mass of the anhydrous crystal, so this would be the value number 3 minus number 1, and here it will be 49.94 grams minus 47.50 grams. And the value of that is 2.44 grams for your anhydrous crystal. Well, to find the mass of water that you boiled out of it, uh, that's going to be the difference between number 2 and number 3. Okay, that's when you were heating it up, you were getting water to boil out of it. And to find out just how much, that's the difference between what you started at in number 2 and where you ended in number 3. So that is 2 minus 3. And that will be 52.50 grams minus 49.94 grams. And that will give you 2.56 grams of water. So when you're looking at this, these two values right here should add up to 5, or whatever value you had right here. So these two should equal this one. Okay. The... Next data point uh, in your table is the moles of anhydrous crystal. So to find that, you need to find the mass of your crystal, which you just did on the previous slide and then earlier up in your table, and you need to divide that by the molar mass. Well, the moles of anhydrous crystal will be calculated by, we found it to be 2.44 grams, and the anhydrous crystal for MgSO4 the molar mass is 120.36 grams per mole. Now, your value is going to be different here for copper sulfate, okay, but that value is in your handout, okay? So go check that for the number that should go there for your anhydrous molar mass. And that value right there to three significant figures, 0 0.0203 moles, and that's of... MgSO4. We then need the moles of water molecules, and that is 2.56 grams. Again, that's coming from your table. You just found that. Divided by the molar mass of water is 18.02 grams per mole. Okay, and that gives you 0.142 moles of water. So you, you might have been able to follow up to this point uh, on your own, and now you're probably wondering, well, how do I find out how many water molecules 
that is for every MgSO4? Well, you're going to do what you did for every empirical formula, and that was when you had everything in moles, you divide by the smallest number of moles present for all of them. Divide by the smallest number of moles present for all. Okay, so that would be 0 0.0203 moles of MgSO4. Divide by, again, that's going to be the smallest, so 0 0.0203. And for the water, 0 0.142 moles of H2O. Divide by the smallest amount of moles, which was 0 0.0203. And you're going to wind up with... 1.00 moles of the magnesium sulfate and this works out nicely at 7.00 moles of H2O. So therefore my empirical formula for this compound is MgSO4 dot and here we have seven water molecules so we filled in that blank with a seven. Okay, Your formula CuSO4 dot some number of water molecules should end up with a nice whole number just like the water right here. And that's what you will put in this space. I'll give you a hint, it's not 7. It will be a different whole number. Okay, so that will go right there. And that's how you solve the first analysis question.